so we have 15 minutes left for some questions. First one there. Well, the demo Kish, I'm a journalist and publisher of the... They will not hear you like that. Well, the demo Kish, journalist and publisher of the largest Ukrainian newspaper here in Canada, Novishia, Prince uh, TVC, New Pathway, uh, Ukrainian News. Um, as was stated, it is obvious that the Russians have a very well-funded, coordinated, and centralized effort uh, aimed at spreading disinformation. In effect, a ministry of disinformation. The response in Ukraine or Canada or most Western countries has been a little more fragmented. We have NGOs like Stop Fake. We've got the independent media. We have various efforts within various uh, ministries or departments of government. Uh, let me throw out this, I guess, maybe provocative uh, question. Should Canada, should Ukraine, should these Western countries have a similarly well-funded, centralized, coordinated, uh, I almost hate to say, a ministry of truth and information? We, we, uh, we have also public TV representation. <laughs> I would invite Zurab to say a few words what public TV does. Yeah, so we have the editor-in-chief of Public Channel in uh, yes. Kiev with us. Yes, thank you so much uh, for that. Role. But for me, it's a complicated problem because uh, all I have to say to you, I will shut. New, our new relation with the new presidential administration, or uh, how they call uh, Office of President, or something like that, that was a shot, and then, uh, that was the phrase, we want to start the information war, they say. Uh, I don't know the details. In a few days, uh, due to <coughs> Council of Europe, we'll meet again until the 11th of the, the next uh, week. And uh, they are writing strategy of this information war. They said to me, to us, to public broadcaster, we want you to become uh, uh, Russia today. And I was shocked a little bit, but uh, I want to hear the details. Uh, I want to understand what they talk about. There is a very thin border be between the uh, propaganda, you know, and the... Uh, I agree with the Yezhi, with the... It's about not the propaganda. It's to do, like any I do, the Russian language good content for them. And maybe like that you can talk with them. Maybe you can get understanding from them. And about public broadcaster. We had the problem inside the country, I mean, language problem. If we, the society, let's say, active society, uh, doesn't take the, the, the Russian language problems, they don't like it, and they have some problem to do that inside. But if we will do the international broadcasting, yes, of course. So we're not propaganda, but something about it. Ukraine for all the world. That's it. So, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Wait, wait, Jesse. We, we continue with James. Um, I, I think it's a great question. And I think there's maybe three areas in which you do need a much more coordinated response. And therefore, you need to set up the institutions to do it. We can't continue like this. Uh, so unfortunately, we have to do things. I think one area in which we need a much more coordinated response is for detection and resilience. So we need a, cent a more centralized effort so that we know what's happening, we can see what's happening, and we can build in resilience into our system. Second, we need a more coordinated and organized offense. And I think uh, Yerji was talking about that. We're always playing defense. We lose 5% every time we get attacked. So you lose. So to reach into the Russian information space and make it more diverse does require an organized, centralized uh, support, even if the recipients of funding can then do whatever they want. Uh, so that's the second thing. But I think a third area is we need to build in resilience into our uh, society. And that's a very complicated thing. So we looked into, our center of excellence looked into why the US was so vulnerable to disinformation efforts. But France resisted. Uh, because there were attempts to hack the American election, attempts to hack the French election. And what we clearly saw was the attempts to hack the French election were much, much less successful. And, and there were a couple of reasons why the French were better able to resist. Three reasons. One is they were warned, extensively warned. 
uh, and so they'd seen the American experience. Second was uh, that the United States, if you do surveys, over 60% of Americans, or around 60% of Americans, get their news from social media, BuzzFeed, Facebook. It's extremely easy to manipulate that. In France, that number is like 20%. Uh, they don't go to these sources. So shifting people away from the most vulnerable sources of information may be something we need to consider as a society. Uh, and then the third reason is uh, French people are very skeptical of everything that we get told. Uh, so that's a societal thing, which I think is hard to, to teach. But you know, in classes, and we were just talking about this earlier, uh, in Belgium now, kids, my kids, are taught every week how to tell what's real from what's fake when uh, they go online. And they get classes on it. And I think, and I know that you're, you're leading this effort in, in Ukraine. And I think that's something that all of our societies now need to teach all our kids and actually all of our grown-ups all the time, how to process this information and know what's real. It's not real, and you need a centralized effort to do that. Thank you. One more question. Yeah, thank you very much. Levan Vichit is my name. I am the International Development Law Organization country manager for Ukraine. Um, we are funded by the US government and we are assisting the Ukrainian government um, in the field of criminal justice uh, reform. But this question, this question or comment, um, I would make um, not in this capacity, but in my former capacity as a Georgian politician and uh, diplomat. Uh, we had the honor uh, in 2004 and 2005 the nation to um, experience the first wave of uh, Russian launched um, international warfare. Um, and um, I believe um, what James just uh, mentioned, that understanding how it works is, uh, is very important. But I think understanding why it works um, is equally important as well. Um, and this, there are different reasons in our part of the world, in Georgia, Ukraine, all of our white worlds, and in the West. Um, if it's, uh, in, in our part of the world, it's probably mostly um, the weak uh, institutions, um, journalists or, uh, or, or people who work in this field that lack uh, professionalism and so on. But in the Western part um, of the world, I believe it's more about being divided, whether we recognize what is happening. Um, and it's probably the biggest um, ally, and it, it was mentioned as well, um, for those who manage this information war on the Russian side, is uh, how, uh, how the Western actors, political forces react um, questioning whether it's happening at all and denying particular examples where it, uh, where it happens. Um, and probably particular fields where, um, where more um, regulations could be put in place would be how the investments or where the investments come from, um, how money is spent in politics um, or, or, or how um, uh, lobbying, political lobbying is working in particular countries. Without, because we cannot respond in the same way, we cannot launch uh, the same kind of propaganda and fake news, um, uh, fake news like waves. We have to understand our own weaknesses and then protect ourselves. Uh, 